there. You walk into ICT Watch, one of the most informative and authoritative IT show on TV. And my name is Tayo Adeus. You're welcome. Nigeria at 50. Africa Digital Forum and ICT Watch Africa Digital Awards 2010 is here. The African Digital Forum is designed to discuss the growth, potentials, and challenges of African digital opportunities. While ICT Watch Africa Digital Awards is to identify, appreciate, and honor corporate organizations and individuals who have contributed in no small measures towards the accelerated development and rapid expansion of information and communications technology ICT industry in Africa. With the team, Nigeria at 50, the knowledge economy, challenges, and prospects. Keynote addressed by Dr. Ijinjua, host Babatule Raji Fachola, chief host Professor Dora Quinley, and Professor Mohamed Kauje, guests of honor. Dr. Olusha Gumimiku, Alaji Aliu Akwedoma, special guest of honor, Right Honorable Dimeji Bankole, chairman of the occasion, Alaji Bamanga Tuko, venue, Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Ikeja, Lagos, date, Friday, November 26, 2010. Time 6 p.m. prompt for inquiries and participation. Please log on to www.ictwatchnetwork.com or call the coordinator on 0055001898. Africa Digital Awards 2010. You deserve to be celebrated. Today, in this program, we will be looking at Nigeria at 50. Our satellite will be on Nigeria Communications Commission. The story so far, especially in the last 10 years, that has brought about what is now referred to as the Telecom Revolution. Join us. Nigeria at 50. The Nigeria Communications Commission, a giant leap. Is so enormous that it's difficult to identify. Uh, the reverberating effect on other sectors of the economy due to the rapid development of telecommunications are not be quantified. I think for the future, the commission, the new commission, and the new management will have to begin. And try to put policies that will guide the commission over the next 10 year period. If I have been successful in the NCC, it is because I had an as chair. The nation still requires a lot of us to commit to selfless lives to this nation. And I enjoy and of course to try and do whatever we can to continue to improve the fortunes of this country. Because there is still a lot of work to do. And I am available. We know that many Nigerians wish to enjoy affordable and protective service in the Nigerian telecommunication network and we shall strive to achieve those as many as possible. We know that industry expectations will be between us broadband and internet services across the country and we will pursue this to this large contribution. The Nigerian Communications Commission, established November 24, 1992, under the 1975 decree, began its operation in a rented apartment in Victoria Island, Lagos before moving to Abuja, also into a rented apartment and subsequently into its multi-million Nara building, which is a mark of progress. Back in the year 2000, no one could talk about availability of telephone services, let alone about success in the industry. Today, however, the story is different. From 400,000 working lines, Nigeria can now boast of over 75 million subscribers, thus making the high status attached to telephony become a thing of the past. Ten years ago when I was appointed, um, all I knew that I was going to do was to help shape 
uh, the destiny of the country as far as communications industry is concerned. Um, first of all, uh, the brief I got on resumption of duty was that the federal government under the new the, uh, democratic dispensation at that time was anxious to embark on what was called sector reform. And it was also a very serious business that time because the federal government had set up what they call Telecom Sector Reform Implementation Committee that was chaired by the then Minister of Communications. And the mandate of that committee was to come out with those things that were necessary to ensure an improved communication landscape in Nigeria. It started from a keenly contested telecoms auction, a judge to be one of the best in the world and the best ever in Africa in the area of transparency. Since then, the growth in the industry has remained unstoppable as it has permeated all sectors of the economy, from banking and advertising, through marketing to governance, the growth has been phenomenal. So it was clear that the government was very anxious to make a change. And I count myself privileged that I was selected among many to head the Nigerian Communications Commission at that time. So obviously what we knew and what we set out to do was to improve telecom. What we knew was that telecom services were at a level that did not befit uh, this country. And there were just uh, 400,000 lines that are, were working. Most of the lines were government offices. Um, a few, perhaps less than 50% were in private homes. Uh, most of the lines were either in government offices or in private companies and big corporates. And, um, and a lot was, a lot of dependence was on fixed line. And the analog mobile services at that time hardly had up to 25,000 people who were connected to it. So obviously there was a big task to develop the telecom industry and move the sector forward. I must confess that none of us dreamt that the explosion will be this fast and that we will be talking about 76 million connected lines by today. Um, of course, when you had 400,000 lines, you were aiming for something like 6 million lines after 3 to 5 years and then for that growth. And it looked like a major um, aspiration at that time. And um, uh, the blueprint, if I may summarize it in one sentence, is the need to change the status quo and to create an enabling environment to allow private sector investment to come into this sector and unleash the potential that this country had. It was a 10 member board and I can tell you today that none of the board members, even one, had an interest in any of the companies that were coming to bid for this license. We all decided that nobody should show interest in any company. So that gave us a free mind and an undiluted attention to follow the rules to the letter and make sure that the auction was successful. And that's how it came out the way it did. Because if any of us was compromised at any time, perhaps we will start looking at how to bend the rules in order to suit one person or the other. Ownership of mobile phones now cuts across the various social classes 
opening up great opportunities for e-banking, e-health, e-security, e-education, and so on in the country. The growth in the telecom sector has resulted in the creation of over 12,000 direct jobs with hundreds of thousands also informally employed through the sector. Today, the sector is a key contributor to the gross domestic product, GDP, and the percentage share from the telecom sector rose from 0.06 in 1996 to 2.39 in 2007 at 1999 basic prices at the rate of network growth nigeria has since 2008 become the nation with the largest number of connected lines in africa as attested to by alton president adebayo binga i remember in the beginning where we were the tenor brought telecom to a position of relevance the telecom, which in Tato was seen as elitist, has become the first place of contact with many Nigerians. And today, one of the most public, functional public infrastructure that we do have. Without the independence of our regulator, success ahead is very doubtful. We would like to call on government at all levels to ensure the sustenance of the independence of the industrial community. However, the nation's performance in the area of internet and broadband penetration is not as high as that of telephony. But huge and visible efforts are ongoing at facilitating a more rapid development of Nigeria's data capability by promoting large-scale broadband internet deployment and aggressive fiber optic rollout across the country with the unified access service licenses uasl and the 3g licenses the nigerian communications commission facilitated the phenomenal expansion of telephone lines in the country in addition the ncc licensed several internet service providers isps and has further encouraged the spread of its access by initiating a licensing regime to simplify authorization processes for the rollout of cyber cafes and telecenters. The Nigerian socio-economic landscape has been greatly transformed and has had positive impact on virtually all facets of life in the country. Titi Omwetu is President Atcon. 1999 and now, what we've done is to have opened up the industry. From now on, we expect that we will now begin serious regulation. Yes, we have opened up the industry. We have now made people to see that there is business to do in telecommunications. The telecom boom has resulted in greater usage of internet technology, growth and availability of cyber cafes, increased internet provision by ISPs and PTOs, increased communication services such as mobile telephony, email, voice over IP, a digital telephone service that uses the public internet as well as private backbones instead of the traditional telephone network. The government needs to do more uh, in that particular area. One thing that they can easily identify as a cost to them is the fact that when technology is converging, information technology and telecommunications are converging into one unit. Its administration in Nigeria, in Nigeria, has not provided. We have separate administrative entities regulating each aspect of this. So it, it, it creates uh, some level of uh, impedance 